like a V, it's an OR. Okay, so if it's not a real account, it's not an active account, or, excuse me, not a real account or not an active account, call the vendor. And um, then we have the call card holder. Um, and basically, um, it has to be a real account, otherwise there's no card, card holder to a call. And then there are two other things um, that one or the other has to be not true. It either has to be going over the limit, okay, so it's not within limit, or it has to be in a bad location. So it's not in an okay location. So if either the limit or the location is bad, which I've formed here as this intermediate condition, okay, if limit or location is bad and it's a real account, call the cardholder. Okay, so some of you are probably looking at that and saying, oh, I love that, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, that's really cool, and others of you are probably saying, wow, uh, gee, I see how that works, but I don't like it. Some of you might be saying, well, I still don't see exactly how that works. Um, that, that's okay. If you, th these, the, you're, you're less likely to run into these than just a standard um, decision table, so I, I don't, don't get too stressed out if you're looking at this and saying, oh my god, I was doing fine on this webinar all the way up until here and now I got lost and I'll never be able to use decision tables. Uh, you can live without these if you, if, uh, if you have to uh, or if you want to. Now, uh, given a uh, table, if, if you do like these, if you do think these things are really cool and you just can't live without them in your life, um, you want to be able to create them from the table, well, it's, it's easy enough. You take the conditions, you put them on the left-hand side of a blank piece of paper uh, or blank Visio <laughs> sheet if you're using Visio, and then you list all the actions on the right-hand side. So the conditions are on the top left of the decision table and, they're on the, and the actions are on the uh, bottom left, and so you're basically just grabbing them and putting them on opposite sides of a piece of paper. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go action by action. You're going to read the top of the table and you're going to look at how the combinations of actions, excuse me, the combination of conditions to cause or don't cause the actions. And you use those Boolean operators that I showed you to make the connections and um, repeat that for all the actions and you know, then you're done. Now, uh, I'm sure there is some sort of fancy technique for doing this with non-Boolean conditions, um, but I'm not sure exactly what it is and I've never taken the trouble to learn it. Um, so there's probably some extension of this is required, or you have to convert the um, conditions into Boolean conditions or something like that, um, all of which sounds like a lot of work. So as I said, I don't tend to use these, and you know, I think they're, they're interesting but not necessarily as useful decision tables. But if you do like this idea, um, you, you'll probably want to look into a little further how to create the um, um, graph based on a um, decision table that includes both Boolean and non-Boolean conditions. Okay, but anyway, that's, that's enough on the cause-effect graphs for the moment. Uh, let's move on. I, I promised a discussion about equivalence partitioning and, uh, with respect to decision tables. And so let's take an example here. If we look at column 9 in the collapse table, where it says okay, if it's not a real account, um, you know, do a certain set of things. It you know, doesn't matter whether it's active or within limit or whatever. Um, so we can equivalence partition the condition of not a real account. And we could say, well, let's see. Now, um, you look at a credit card. You get a card number. You get the card holder. You've got the expiration date. And you've got the card security code, that three- or four-digit code that's on there. And if any uh, mismatches occur amongst those uh, four different values, um, then uh, that would that would result in a uh, uh, the card being you know, the account being not real. Um, so um, we can say that uh, there are three uh, sort of fundamental equivalence partitions for the not real account. They do not involve combinations. That's the uh, number name combination is wrong. Number expiry date combination is wrong. Number card security code combination is wrong. Any, just those by themselves. Everything else is fine, but those by themselves are not OK. So boom, it's not a real account. Okay. We can also say, though, that it's also possible that we could have 
three different ways for two things to mismatch. So what if we have uh, a mismatch here between the number and the name and the number and the expiry date? So those don't match. So whoops, that's that's invalid. Here's another possibility: the number and the expiry date and the number of the card security code don't miss, don't match. Okay, and then we can say, well, the card security code and the number and the name and the number don't match. So let's now we've got uh, six equivalence classes there, and then we could say, well, there's even a, a, a seventh equivalence class um, where we say that none of these three things match. They're all they're all out of sync. Okay. So if you're interested in testing every possible way that that condition uh, could occur, the not a real account, then you would be uh, looking at seven tests to cover the equivalence partitions. And we can also use boundary values in combination here. Um, so let's say we look at the uh, um, within limit condition. That's here, right? So we've got yeses and nos there. Um, now, um, we can do boundary value analysis and say, hmm, look on this line here, and they got some, uh, we got some range of values for what the balance is, right? What's the current balance? Um, so we could have a, a zero, right, uh, some sort of normal at typical value in the middle of the range potentially, and then we could have it's going to be exactly at the limit after the transaction. It could be exactly over the limit by one cent after the transaction. Um, could be um, exactly uh, at the limit before the transaction, of course, so any, any subsequent transaction would, would push it over. And then maximum over limit after the transaction was... Uh, approved, uh, if it were to be approved, of course it's not supposed to be. So what we would have is four within limit tests. All right, so there's a limit, limit, um, no limit, right? And then we've got the three over, over limit uh, tests here. Um, okay. Um, so, okay, well, um, we're good on the um, on the within limits because see here this is a within limit within limit within limit um, and there's the fourth right so these three values that we identify boundary value analysis would fit just fine within those four tests that we need to create so we can easily cover these guys in one of these four columns now, in terms of the um, over limit, well, we only have this guy and this guy, right? So, so we'd actually have to split, cover one of these columns twice to cover this one here, or the other one, whichever was the odd person out, right? So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind. Is that in some cases, in the equivalence uh, partitioning or boundary value analysis, acts on a single table or excuse me, in a single column. In other cases, it can act on a, a condition and the, the row, basically, and, and it can identify some set of tests that then have to be covered across the columns. So certainly possible to combine them, as shown here. And I think uh, uh, as a matter of competently applying this technique, we probably should. <laughs>